What's going on guys? My name is Brad and in today's video what we're going to discuss is chronic kidney disease. So regarding the pathophysiology of chronic kidney disease, the way that I like to think about it is essentially the kidneys are the filters of the body, right? They're directly responsible for filtering out all the nitrogenous waste products that would otherwise accumulate within our body. It filters it out and then we end up peeing it out in the form of a waste product. Click the link below or visit nursing.com slash NFN for a free NCLEX ebook covering the 77 key topics. So the way that I think about it here is kind of like this little fish tank, right? Think about the filter on a fish tank, okay? And what would happen if you didn't change that filter out for months and months and months, right? Crud, gunk is going to accumulate within that filter, blocking that filter off and preventing it from being able to do its job of filtering. So what are some assessment findings that we're going to see or things that we're going to look for in patients with chronic kidney disease? Well, a few lab values that we're definitely going to want to take note of would be our BUN and creatinine. That's the first thing. This is one of the classic markers of renal function, right? Creatinine being a byproduct, a waste product that our kidneys would normally filter out. So you should think if our kidneys, if our filter is failing, then this waste product is only going to go up and up and up. So we could see increasing creatinine in patients with chronic kidney disease. GFR, glomerular filtration rate. So the way that we think about this is that glomerular filtration apparatus that we spoke about with glomerular nephritis, we actually have a GFR rate. It's the actual rate at which we are able to filter out blood through our kidney. That's exactly what the GFR is. That's how you should think about it. And whenever we look at chronic kidney disease, it's kind of broken up into five stages and it's pretty much you're looking at the GFR to classify whether you're in chronic kidney disease stage one, two, three, etc. And the way that you classify it is if you're in chronic kidney disease stage one, you basically have a GFR greater than 90. Chronic kidney disease stage two, you're looking at 60 to 90 for your GFR. Three, you're looking at 30 to 60, 4, 15 to 30. And if you're in chronic kidney disease, stage 5, the last stage, you have a GFR less than 15. That's how it's broken down. Urine output. You're going to see a decrease in urine output in patients who have had chronically hypoperfused kidneys, right? For a long period of time, blood has not gotten to those kidneys. Therefore, the kidneys are now failing. As a result, that filter is breaking down. And we're not only not able to filter out waste products, but we're also not able to filter out fluid. So fluid is gonna back up. It's not going to be put out of the body. So decreased urine output, increased fluid volume overload. As you're not able to filter out that fluid, it backs up. We start seeing that in the form of fluid overload, edema for instance. Azotemia, as you have continual increased buildup of nitrogenous waste products in the body, you start to see it in the form of azotemia. Lethargy, also anemia. Remember that the kidney is where erythropoiesis begins, the release of EPO. Uh, if you do not have this, one of the stimulating factors necessary for erythropoiesis or the building of red blood cells, then anemia is going to result. If you need more help breaking down complex topics like this one, make sure to head over to nursing.com slash NFN. Click the link in the description below or scan the QR code to unlock your free NCLEX review that covers 77 must-know nursing topics. Make sure that you learn this, that we love you guys. Now go out, be your best self today, and as always, happy nursing.